Hello guys and welcome to this week's video tutorial. Just before we kick off, you can download all of the data and more in here. The link is in description. Automotive 3D design packages are very expensive. Unless you work for a larger organization, chances are that you won't be able to afford the cost of a decent package. So I was wondering how to cut the cost for us, the ordinary end users. I recently had an idea of using the cheapest alias concept software to try out whether it's possible to achieve the same results as if I was using more expensive alias automotive. I will be modeling this C pillar using the only tools available in the cheapest version and finding out if I will be able to create high quality automotive surfaces. Our workflow will slightly differ from what I usually do because we simply don't have the whole palette of tools in the Ellis concept. But don't worry, with some trickery we can get around it. We will kick off by building up geometry from outside in. We will create this vertical surface which will take up the most amount of our modeling time because it's the most crucial to get it right. Then we will start patching out the remaining openings by adding all of the consecutive fillets. This includes building up the transition patch. And finally I will show you how to analyze the scan geometry without A-class tools available at your sleeve and create some rounds between the shoulder surface and the C-pillar. So let's chop up our scan data and work only on the bit we need. We can hide everything that we don't want. This moment of analyzing Zebra is very important. Just take your time and read the stripes. We don't have the principal max tool but we can use the isofold lines to see how the geometry lines up. At this moment, I begin with the most obvious, the curves around perimeter. By the way, you can change colors of your workspace to better see what you are doing. Remember, it's always better to examine the curvature cone plot in 3D space. Look at it from many angles. As usual, give your curves some lead-in for smoother transition. Let's do some curve projections to begin our surface reconstruction. Fortunately, the cheapest alias concept version has the tools for reverse engineering. Create a rail surface and examine its zebra. It doesn't look bad, it only needs some minor adjustments. There is still a long way to go before we can call this patch ready. However, for now I'm just making sure it resembles our scan and I keep at the back of my head that I will come back to it later on.
Instinctively, I'm looking for a comb curvature plot tick box, but Elias' concept doesn't have it. Instead, I use this tool. It allows me to examine curvature of my geometry. Let's begin the construction of our vertical patch. Maybe we could simply start by copying and pasting our existing curve, then moving it to an approximate position and doing what we usually do for reverse engineering, which is curve projection, and then, maybe in the back view, moving our curve in progress to the curve on scan. The last step is to check its comb plot and make sure it is close enough to the curve on scan. It is time to create our vertical slab surface. This patch is very important and will take a lot of time to tweak it right. We can simply start with a draft surface and gradually add more CV rows to get more sculptability. Let's use the cross section tool to display line lattice. This way we can see better where our surface is with regards to the scan data. You don't have to stay rigid to your original idea and can try to move the patch around. Sliding as well as pulling and pushing is allowed. You can sort of follow your gut feeling that you will develop if you do 3D modeling a lot. Let's leave this patch for now and move on to the upper blend. We are going to develop all of the C pillar blends and our vertical surface simultaneously so it wouldn't make much sense to focus on one individual patch at this initial stage of modeling. Let's copy the edge curve of our blend, extend it and use it to get an idea of how top edge of our vertical surface should look like. We can adjust this curve to obtain more acceleration. Don't forget to do the same in top view. Finally, we can align the surface to this curve and blend a couple of extra rows if needed to make the flow look better. Now, when we have our curve, let's align our top edge to it. After the alignment, we can still manipulate CVs of our patch, particularly the last CV, 
and at the same time observe the zebra. Watch me how I simultaneously use the information obtained by section lines from the cross-section editor and the zebra representation to my advantage. I'm trying to make my patch close to the scan with an accurate highlight. Remember that looking at CVs at low angle will let you better see the CV's misalignment. Now we are ready to create our adjacent blend patch. We can use the monorail tool to quickly build geometry and later carry on working on it. We don't have the explicit control option in alias concept, so we need to remove one hole or span manually. I will delete one hole because I want to align this surface G2 without any spare CV holes. After the alignment, I can manually add as many holes as I want. Let's start with one extra hole. For now, let's only align position G0 between our slab and blend. Sometimes something unexpected shows up, just like here we have a gap which we have to eliminate. Ok, let's align G0 again and influence all the other CV holes. Just a quick try to align G1 and see how it affects our blend. Unfortunately, the alignment destroys our zebra. Ok, maybe we can do some manual operations. Using the G1 surface continuity tool, we can check how much we are off to achieve tangent continuity. After we have manually buffed out our blend to G1, we can try the same tactic with the G2 continuity. Because we don't have the curvature U and V plot display, we have to use the cross-section editor. With this tool active, we can work on and make the geometry right.
Let's not forget the connection in here. Remember, just make it nice. At the moment, the cross-section comb plot shows that there is a little problem. Ok, after the problem has been sorted out, now it's time to get on with the lower blend. Alias concept automatically adds hundreds of spans to my patch. Because I don't have the explicit control, I can only manually remove all the extra CV holes later. The cross-section plot will show us the truth about our surfaces. We have some ups and downs in the comb that we can probably minimize by sliding CVs. Finally we can move on to the central blend which will close off our C-pillar geometry. Let's make it of a decent length and eyeball the CV's layout. Additionally, it is good to use whole planarized tool to make CVs line up. Just look at how CV sliding helps our zebra. We are getting closer and closer to the scan. But how to analyze an inside geometry without the curvature U and V that isn't available in alias concept?
How about using a patch precision tool to sketch lines within surfaces and analyze their combs using the curvature comb tool? Let's project a line our bottom C-pillar blend. Also, let's align the central connecting blend patch and compare zebras. At this moment I got carried away by the zebra investigation and completely forgot to check the geometry to scan deviation. You will see that it will come back to me later. As you can see, we have deviated too much inboard of the scan and we need to push CVs out. Remember that when you are happy with Zebra, but not with the surface to scan deviation and you still need to push or pull geometry, it is better to grab two or even three CVs together and manipulate. If you do it this way, you will limit damage to the Zebra that you worked so hard on. Actually. The fact that we have moved so much closer to the scan did a lot of good to our highlight. Now it looks much much better. We are moving on to the last part of the video. Let's create a transitional blend surface between the vertical patch and the shoulder sill surface. I'm trying to estimate the beginning of our blend by throwing a curve. Later we will examine Zebra and you will see that my line could be slightly higher because with this low line our blend will be a little squeezed and this will affect the highlight. Now, in this view you probably can see what I mean. Here the Zebra could be better. Now we can anchor our blends to the other side, the shoulder sill surface. We have something like a million of spans at the moment that we will have to remove manually.
We need a little bit of curling in the middle of this zebra here. This is why we tweak our vertical patch just a bit. I think that the shoulder surface would need more CVs, but let's just leave it like this for the time being. Also, as I mentioned before, I think that this blend should begin a touch higher. This way, we will get a better transition.